I'm Suk Yin hanging out on Queen Street in front of the Shum City building. You might be wondering why I'm over here when in fact the crowd is over there. Hey, I'm just on my way over there. You are watching Much Music's intimate and interactive with Foo Fighters. Uh, this is our first ever live television broadcast of their music, so we're very, very, very happy to have them here. Oh, okay, and, and, yes, we are very happy to have them here. Oh, and there you go, public transit. The intimate and interactive, got to explain it to you. Hey, hello. Opportunity to get in touch with the band and ask them questions. All right, so we're here. We're gonna make okay, Dawn, make like the friendly giant. Open the front doors. Thank you kindly. Hey.
Nothing match. This is off of my first record. It's called Alone and Easy Target. We're totally surrounded. We want to get out, but we can't. The door's blocked. There's no escape. This song's off our new record. It's called Hey Johnny Park. Beautiful 
and very loud. Now, we're, you're watching The Much Music's Intimate and that Interactive with Foo Fighters. And the next part is the interactive part. We want you to get a hold of the band through phone, fax, or email. This is how you do it. If you would like to get Intimate and Interactive with the Foo Fighters for questions and comments, the toll-free number to call is 1-800-265-MUCH. That's 1-800-265-6824. By fax, the number to call is area code 416-591-MUCH. That's area code 416-591-6824. You can also interact with the Foo Fighters by email. The address is foo at muchmusic.com. Yeah, got it. That's how it's done. We'll see you after this next break with the Foo Fighters. This much music presentation is brought to you by Durex Chic Condoms. Safer sex should still be great sex. <laughs> How would you like to meet the Backstreet Boys? Fruité Fruit Drinks presents the boys in concert in Toronto and Halifax this fall. Enter Fruité's Backstage with the Boys contest and you could win one of 10 VIP packages, including four concert tickets, an exclusive meeting with the Backstreet Boys for you and three friends, and $400 in spending money. Send in your entry form from the back label of specially marked Fruité bottles before July 17th at noon. Fruité and the Backstreet Boys, this year's hottest attraction. Newsweek magazine raves Men in Black is the coolest, funniest movie of the summer. This party just getting started. Rolling Stone magazine calls it this season's number one joyride. Men in Black, now playing in theaters everywhere. I'm the President of the United States. On July 25th. How the hell did they get Air Force One? Experience the motion picture event of the summer. Harrison Ford. Get off my plane. Air Force One. Opens everywhere July 25th. Don't let this balmy weather fool you. There's a deep freeze moving in all across Canada. Chill. Batman and Robin is this summer's coolest blockbuster. So chill out with official Batman and Robin collector's cups at Taco Bell. Chill. The coolest movie and the coolest collector's cups. Images frozen irresistibly for you. Yours for just 49 cents with any delicious Big Bill combo purchase. Get yours before they're gone. This afternoon, I double-clicked my cranium and opened my mind. Now I will fake left and go right. I will follow my heart. I will be brave. 
I will make my mark. I will take no prisoners. I will dare to be damned. I will defy the laws of gravity. I will go the distance. And I will remember where I came from. Next. Much music's intimate and interactive with Foo Fighters. Hey guys, Hi. so I'm gonna introduce the band first off. The newest Foo Fighter of the Foo would be Taylor Hawkins on drums. And to complete the rhythm section, Nate Mendel on bass. And on lead vocals and guitar, David Grohl. And on guitar and backup vocals, Pat Smear, yeah. <laughs> wow, that was really amazing four songs. Four songs, uh, both uh, three from the newest album, one from the most, re uh, the, the first album. Can you hear me? No. You can't? No. Okay, hey, hey, hey. Hey! Now I can. Okay, so you just played a selection of music from both albums, um, amazing, uh, rock and roll sensibility, pop music sensibility in both albums. Okay, mic in my face, I was like that. <laughs> All right then, uh, both, both uh, demonstrated major rock and roll sensibilities and pop music sensibilities. And uh, the second album, however, has more of a dynamic range between quiet and loud and an overall sort of more confident execution. You've got the lyrics out there for the world to see. W was this uh, based upon the, f the fact that you guys are collaborating for the first time on this album, the second album, The Color and the Shape? Well, I think it has something to do with the fact that we spent about a year and a half on the road. We toured a lot, and we came up with most of these songs while we were on the road. And so we just kind of became better while we were on the road. So we wrote all these songs. Shut up! He's... I'm joking. That was a joke, excuse me. A little half burst. Uh, so, yeah, what was the question? Yeah. The, yeah, the confidence. Would you agree with that? Like, the, as far as the execution there? What do you think, Nate? Um, yeah, I'm sure the touring had a lot to do with it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and with, with, uh, with Taylor drumming, it's like a major, he's like the engine there. Uh -huh. Really oh. hard hitter. <laughs> hard hitting drummer. Okay, so the first, uh, the first question comes to us from the Speaker's Corner. It's the uh, electronic Speaker's Corner that goes right across the country. And this one comes to us from the West Coast from Vancouver. Okay. okay. Let me show you something. <laughs> Listen carefully. I'm Suzanne from Vancouver, and I have a question for the Foo Fighters. You've all found musical success on other projects. Is it now hard to work together as a group? Um, yeah. It's really tough yeah. But very, very. Yeah, what, does that, did that make sense? <laughs> well, I guess it's she's. Like, it was like kind of a conflicting ego kind of question, I guess. And oh. that, no, it's not a problem. No, it's not I a guess. problem. I understood the question. Did you, as as do you guys have um, our... feel that you're, for, even though you have very many projects that you've come from, do you feel like you're uh, like punk music derived? Um, well, I think all of us listen to. When we were kids, we listened to rock music. We played in punk bands. Like what? Green Day? Is that what he said? Yeah, you were in Green Day. That's right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, we were all in, well, Taylor was, Taylor is like the rock guy in the band. Yeah. Which is good, that's not, you know. Well, it seems like the, uh, the whole band, uh, with Taylor having played with Lance Morissette and yourself with Scream and Nirvana, as well as uh, with uh, Pat... Hey, hey, hey! Hey, come, on, come on! I don't have to come out there and kick everybody's ass a little. Bit. 
And Pat, your work with the, the seminal uh, punk band, Germs. Did you guys um, work? <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that, uh, that, that, uh, that 90s, mu music in the 90s is now uh, an evolution from a very, uh, very small sort of grassroots communities of, say, Washington, D.C. and Seattle and Olympia, Washington? Well, I think that there's a lot of bands from all over the world and a lot of kids who listen to a million different things. So it kind of doesn't really matter what, what music you listened to when you were a kid. It doesn't matter what kind of bands you played in. As long as your band is good now, you know, then it doesn't really matter. OK, these girls have a question for you. Hi. OK, we wanted to know what your musical influence were. Like, when you were growing up, who did you listen to? Like, each of you, all together, like, each, separate answers. Scorpions. <laughs> a lot of Pat Benatar. <laughs> And um, a little bit of Quarter Flash, too. Quarter Flash would have been cut. And uh, who else? Uh, Jerry Rafferty. Jerry, Jerry Rafferty. Rafferty. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of Jerry Rafferty in the music. We do a Jerry Rafferty oh, song. Oh, is that right, eh? Yeah. Huh? What, Harry? Street. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Ohio Players, a lot of that. And uh, the, like uh, with. What? Collectively, all of you have Collective been in a song. lot of bands together. Have you ever counted how many bands you have been together? No. no. Some of the names are, are uh, Screaming Hormones, Mission Impossible, Dane Bramage, and Chewbacca Kaboom. <laughs> Was it important for you to play together with uh, other musicians with uh, musical histories, like strong musical histories? Was, I'm sorry, what you was it important for you to surround yourself and play music with other musicians with uh, big musical histories? Well, I think that half the fun of playing music is playing it with a bunch of different people and not just doing it with the same six or seven people for the rest of your life, but wandering around and being a band slut and just, you know, going from band to band yeah. to band to band to band. It's fun. Yeah. That's good. Cool. We have Kathleen outside. She's with a whole crowd of people. And she's got a question for somebody outside. OK, well, we, I don't know if you can see us, but we are indeed out here in the crowd. It is extremely cold and wet. There we are. Um, and we have a question here from Kate. Hi, this uh, question is actually for Pat Smear. And I'd like to say hi to the rest of the guys. But uh, I was wondering, Pat, when you were in the germs, Was there, you guys used to wear black t-shirts with the blue turquoise circles, and I was wondering if there was any significance to the t-shirts. No. Okay, back to you inside. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> All right, we have a phone call from Lenny from British Columbia. Hey, Lenny. Hi, how are you? Good. Lemmy? Yes, Lenny. Oh, First of all, I really enjoy all your music. And uh, I was wondering, has success affected the way your family or friends treat you? <laughs> all right. <Pardon>? What? <laughs> what was that, Lenny? I was wondering, has success affected the way your family or friends treat you? Oh, yeah. Has uh, success changed the way that your family or, or your friends see you? I don't think so. No? Not mine. <laughs> Yes, totally. Yeah, I know. The thing is... I just is... want to borrow money sometimes. <laughs> I just hand mine away. Can I ask one more question? Go ahead. Uh, uh, Lenny? <laughs> okay. Hey, the drummer. Um, what's it like working with Alanis Morissette? It's great. Yeah. What kind of person is she? Is she a really nice person? Sorry, Lenny? Is Alanis nice to get along with? And... Is, she, is she easy to get along with? Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, the thing is, Dave, you always have... <laughs> you always have like a really down to earth quality about you. And it's such a facade. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. I'm such a bastard in real life. I'm just such a jerk. You don't even know. So the thing is, you can't. If can... you could only experience some of my mood swings, I swear to God. Front man. The front exactly. man. Exactly. Okay. Uh, we have an email. Let's take a look at the email. 
right. Oh, there it is. Hi, guys. On my way to the Tibetan Freedom Concert in New York, I thought I was just going to a big rock show to support a cause, but after attending the press conference Saturday morning, I realized exactly what we were all doing there. How is playing the show more meaningful to you than other shows? Here are three picks from the show. Nate Adams says hi. He's touring with Pond. Okay. Your friend from Victoria. Oh, this is uh, photos from the Tibetan Freedom Concert. Ew. You guys there Ew. in the uh, media slime pit and on stage? Hey, right that's on. us in the golf cart. See? Now so was it an important uh, that was fun. show for you to play? Well, there's an extra, an extra element to it. You know, it's, it's always fun to play a show. And uh, a lot of the big shows are really fun, too, because there's a lot of bands there. But when you're doing it to, um, to help out some people, you get something to feel good about, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's not necessarily like, Foo Fighters music isn't necessarily like political, highly politicized lyrics, but the words that you're writing, Dave, playing little handsy pansy. Sorry, what? The, the, the lyrics that you write with the band, much more personal, but do you think they have any sort of social, social feel to what you're doing? Well, I think that a lot of people can relate to a lot of the things that I'm singing about. Yeah. I mean, maybe they have some personal relevance to a lot of people. I don't know. I don't really know. I just wrote the words. Just like something, like something that you got to get out of there. Yeah. Your system. It's like writing in a journal or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a fax. Dear Mr. Grohl and fellow fighters of Foo, considering that you've directed the video for Monkey Wrench, I was curious as to your opinion on the impact of music videos. Do you feel that videos have created an, an environment for musicians in which image supersedes the music they create? Yes. And thus, either one, pigeonholes them into an image. Yes. Or two, refutes the image and locks them out of the industry. <laughs> what? <laughs> or three, do you feel that videos are just an alternate artistic expression for musicians purely for fun and entertainment and have no relevance for anything? I think that the Buggles said it best when they said video yeah, killed the radio, radio star. You figure, I. I think so, yeah. So is it a necessary evil because you guys put out music videos? Well, yeah, I think that it's fun. Sometimes it can be fun to make videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have yet to put out a super pretentious chalkboard swinging in the background like right you know weird midgets on ice skates <laughs> freaking out on a lake and you know us painting ourselves blue <laughs> that sounds like a really awesome poetry. video you gotta incorporate right it. we haven't done that yet so are you consciously sort of uh not pegging yourself at, like he's talking about image creating and how it locks you into an image are you trying to keep it like uh, broad. I don't really, I don't well, really ever take our image into consideration. And plus, with like the different kind of songs we do too, we're not going to be able to really be pigeonholed, which is kind of nice because there's got you've got silly songs and then you've got, you know, shrunk serious songs, love songs. Okay, cool. Some of those uh, serious issues. Uh, Kathleen is outside with uh, Speaker's Corner from Queen and John. And of. <laughs> and of course, out here on the Chum City Building sidewalk, home of the original and only Speaker's Corner. So let's take a little walk through the crowd to Daryl, who is waiting and has a question for the Foo Fighters. So Daryl, go ahead. What's your question? Um, what's up with all the rumors and stuff about you guys, like, breaking up? Because, like, they're kind of, like, not true, but you can, like, like, like it's just, like, what's up with that? <laughs> we're, we're broken up. We broke up yesterday. That's why we're here now. It's just inertia. <laughs> this was actually filmed yesterday. <laughs> right on. So you're dispelling all those those rumors. Well, we're okay. here, aren't right we? On. That's what I don't understand. Okay. I, people ask that. I heard you guys broke up right before we walk on stage. Yeah, like, you said something interesting about, about um, <laughs> the uh, e internet being a, a possible source of these rumors and how the internet is well, kind of like the washroom wall. Sure. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Okay, you have a Did question. Did you say that? Command. With cool graphics. <laughs> yeah. Hi guys. We uh, yeah. we were in the mosh pit last night. Uh, excellent cost, by the way. Thank you. I, I'd like to um, ask you, we seem to be labeled, us Canadians, as uh, reserved, a reserved lot. Uh, what are your comments on that mosh pit area last night at the warehouse? What did you think of the mosh pit, Nate? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I guess you could grade it. It was probably like, a, you know, a B plus or something. Uh, I don't know. B plus, <laughs> probably. Probably a B plus, I think. But it was hard for us to see, too, because the lights were right in our face, so we couldn't, you know, couldn't really scan the scene. We kind of missed out. Did you guys ever put yourselves in a, in a washing situation? 
<laughs> as a viewer of... In a washing situation? Yeah, a washing situation. I try to avoid them at all costs. <laughs> I usually put myself in a washing situation <laughs> once a day, but... I don't right. know about a washing situation. We're getting very, very uh, in-depth there, um, learning all the, all the nitty-gritty details of the band. And also, um, to alternate between music and interview, the next portion will be lots more music. Come back awesome. with the Foo Fighters on the Intimate and Interactive. This much music presentation is brought to you by Durex Chic Condoms. Safer sex should still be great sex. July 11th at a theater near you. the best of the very best. And starting this Saturday, we once again proudly present the number one hit weekend. Featuring even more number one hits from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I like the way you work, The number one hit weekend. This weekend on much. Boring privileges provided by...
Feel free to sing along if you guys want to sing along. Yeah. Visiting is pretty. Visiting is good. Seems that all they ever wanted was a
Don't you? Music's intimate and interactive with the full fighters. Next up after this commercial break, it'll be your opportunity once again to speak with the band. You can get a hold of them through phone, fax, or email. Take a look at how it's done. If you would like to get intimate and interactive with the Foo Fighters for questions and comments, the toll-free number to call is 1-800-265-MUCH. That's 1-800-265-6824. By fax, the number to call is area code 416-591-MUCH. That's area code 416-591-6824. You can also interact with the Foo Fighters by email. The address is foo at muchmusic.com. In the Intimate and Interactive continues after this commercial break. Inquiring minds wanna know. Get your questions ready and stick around for Foo Fighters. This much music presentation is brought to you by Durex Chic Condoms. Sex should still be great sex. <laughs> Dad, I want a pager. A Motorola? Really? What's in it for me? Dad, you want me? If I'm ever late, page me. See, we can make this connection. You know? I mean, I'm never gonna take it to school. I'll respond like that, and Dad, your pages come first. You would do that for me? <laughs> would you do something else for me? Shave. Motorola pagers to know now. Put on a clean shirt. Motorola, what you never thought possible. This morning the sun rose and I woke up. Now I will cut the strings off my mittens. I will get on the bandwagon and stay on it. I will be curious. I will build it and they will come. I will be more than just a number. I won't get in line. I'll start a new one. And when the sun finally sets, I will be there. Next. They are the best kept secret in the universe. You know how to use these things? No idea whatsoever. Their mission is to monitor extraterrestrial activity on Earth. They are your best. What's this thing? Watch your head. Your last. There's only one way off of this planet, baby. And that's through me. And your only line of defense. Tommy Lee Jones. Will Smith. Men in Black. Now playing in theaters everywhere. Oh, yeah! You people like The Rock? Much Music presents a concert event of the summer, and you can be there. Let's be upfront about it. Live across Canada. Another roadside attraction featuring the tragically hit Bush. Edge Fest 97 featuring Collective Soul, Lilith Fair with Sarah McLaughlin, and you too. 
the Sold Out Pop Mart Tour. We've done the hard work of ensuring your success. Stay tuned to Much Music. intimate and interactive with uh, the Foo Fighters. And right now, Kathleen is outside and she's got a question for the band. Okay, so, all right. It's raining, it's wet, it's very cold, and these people have been here a very long time. How long, you've been here for hours? Yep, since like, oh, hours. Seven hours. Seven hours. Seven hours. All right, like these are diehard fans out here. Uh, okay. You know what? Have you guys seen? Have you taken a look at the the fans outside of the window? There's like a whole lot of steam emanating from them because it's like this really weird freezing day. It's body odor. <laughs> How about do you want to make contact that with some of these people? They've been like hanging out since the morning. Let's go. They are the troopers out there. <laughs> Whoa! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! What do you have? Do you have anything to say to the band? Second. <laughs> All right, where's Kathleen? Oh. Kathleen, do you have a, have you fielded okay, what are you out so there anywhere? Yes, you can see everybody's very excited. So we do have a question okay, what is for the, question? the Foo Fighters from out here on the sidewalk. This is Kathleen. What is your question? Where are you? Um, I'd like to know where you guys get your name from. Okay, where did the name Foo Fighters come from? Okay, are you guys okay? <laughs> All right. This is Canada. Okay. The name. Foo Fighters. What was the origin of the name Foo Fighters? Foo Fighters is a slang term for UFOs. It was used in World War II over Europe by the Royal Air Force when they saw these things in the sky that were glowing balls. And they, some people called them kraut balls and other people called them foo balls. And then some people started calling them Foo Fighters. Are you a sci-fi nerd? Just getting that feel? Maybe. A little bit, yeah. Okay, shall we go back? Shall we? Okay, we got an audience question over there, so let's let's head on over. Okay. okay. All right, then we got an audience question here. It is crazy, isn't it? It's like really crazy. Okay, uh, what's your name? Jamie. Jamie, what's your question for the band? Hey, Dave. Hey. Where are you? Oh, hi. I heard uh, you want to rock the moon someday. With all this uh, Mars hype, would you rather uh, rock the moon or rock Mars? Well, <laughs> touring for a year and a half is long enough. It would take seven months to get to Mars. That's a long way just to go play a show. You know, it's not like going and playing in Japan or something. Are you, so. are you surprised by all this Mars stuff? Like the fact that there might be, have been uh, life and, and water there. Does, is that a surprise to you at all? No. No. Not have, really. Have you ever encountered, like with all the tours that you have done, have you ever had a close encounter on um, the road? No. no. Well, I've seen, where, I've seen things that I can't explain, but, but no, I've never. Like this here. This is a close encounter. I can't explain this. This is pretty weird. <laughs> Speaker's Corner from Montreal. Hi, I'm Jay. This is my buddy Don. We're from uh, Montreal. And we'd like to just ask Dave, what's it like to be in the spotlight now that uh, Kurt Cobain is gone and Nirvana's over? Just want to know what it's like to be up front. It's fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I guess the transition. From, from playing drums to... Well, I started playing guitar when I was like 10. Mm. So I've played guitar longer than I've played drums. Mm -hmm. And 
I played guitar in, in bands when I was like a teenager. But, um, but this is weird. It's a little strange. It's Playing drums is really fun because you can hide behind the yeah, drum set. Right. Like, that's pretty fun. You gotta have and to easy. engage with the audience as a friend. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, you know? like, like that. Like you're the Pope or something. <laughs> that's when it gets weird. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Also, uh, the fellow um, from Speaker's Corner uh, made mention of Nirvana. And, of course, they were bit major inspiration for a lot of people mm -hmm. and uh, gave rise to a new genre of music. Are, are you very proud of the legacy of your work with Nirvana? Well, I was I glad I had fun being in the band. Yeah. So I don't consider it a legacy. Right. I don't think about the pre Nirvana, post Nirvana crap. Right. It was just we're like we're just a band. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah. And did you actually um d did you derive any inspiration from Kurt as a front person? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Probably not. Because I was always looking at his back. So yeah. I couldn't really <laughs> say, yeah. And the, the, the cult of personality, like going out there and having everybody going crazy for you, is it ever really weird to have like this huge difference between, there you go, between um, your public persona and you, yourself when you are by yourself with, hanging with your friends? Is it ever difficult to bridge like the, what you present to the public and who you really are? Well, you just have to think of it like, this is weird and your real life is normal. So this is when it's weird. This is the hour and a half of the day that it's weird. Yeah. So that's not bad. Like an hour okay. and a half a day of being weird. Yeah. Nothing wrong Seeing with that. Seeing another place, experiencing another thing. OK, this is a fax. It's from Maggie Staten of Scarborough, Ontario. She says, hey, much music. And of course, the totally amazing Foo Fighters. I want you to first know I love you guys. You really rock. Where do you guys get the lyrics for your songs? And do you all incorporate your ideas to come up with new tunes? Well, whatever you do now, uh, and now ever you do it, and however you do it, you are doing great. Keep up the good work. I love Maggie. Thank you. Uh, well, we sort of have a Rush situation, just like Rush, where in Rush, you know, Neil Peart writes most of the, the lyrics. Right. Well, Taylor's been writing most of the, the lyrics for these songs. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Our next it. single's called It's So Thrift. <laughs> <laughs> That's so thrift. Hey, okay. I flobed. You flobed? <laughs> what a flober. <laughs> What's a flomer? Ask him. <laughs> Taylor, flomer? Ooh. New linguistics? Uh, yeah, the slang thing. <laughs> <laughs> flober, and you blew it. Uh, you, uh. To you flobe. Know, to. One who, one to F up. <laughs> oh, F up, okay. You there know, like uh, drop a drumstick in the middle of a chorus or something. Oh, that was, okay. That's a flobe. A flow or a flome? Flobe. Flobe. F L O B. You made a flober. Yeah. Flober. Okay, this is. Uh, you Judy. are a flober. Judy? Judy has you a question a for you guys. Okay, I have a question for Nate. I was wondering if you're still friends with the other members of Sunny Day Real Estate and if they resent you at all because you left to join a bigger band. Well, we'd, we'd broken up, so that wasn't really an issue, and I'm, I'm friends with most of them. I'll is it true that. that they're going to be getting back together to get, again as a band? I really enjoyed, enjoyed their work. There might be another record of like, old, hard-to-get things, but, you know, we, can't, we wouldn't really get back together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there's, it's also interesting, too, like you're all, you're all from different places. Like you left Alanis Morissette's band, and with uh, Sunny Day Real Estate, you left the band, and you go on to other things and like thematically in the album I'm hearing a lot of sort of reconciliation of like that things just aren't permanent the passing of like love the passing of bands the passing of friends do you feel like you've gotten sort of like are you used to that the flow of like people in your life moving from place to place the flow of people in our life the flow of people in our life <laughs> yeah <laughs> lots of flobin the flobers in our life <laughs> such a deep question hey? so much so That's much darkness <laughs> Uh, well, no, of course not. You never do. I mean, you always want things to be kind of static, but they're, they're not, so it's yeah. kind of getting used to it. So it's not something that you've totally gotten a handle of the things. Okay. Uh, Kathleen is outside the window, and it seems to have stopped raining. Yes, Kathleen. It's, it's more of a trickle now, wouldn't you say? Okay. So we have... Uh, are you having a good time out here? Oh, 
okay. heavy metal parking lot. So we have Bernard here, all the way from Labrador. Right, Bernard? Yep. And you have a question for the Foo Fighter. Yeah, if you could change anything in the music industry, what would you change? So I don't know if you heard that, but Foo Fighters, if you could change anything in the music business, what would that be? Back inside. Anything in the music industry. That's a big one. Hmm. Uh, 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 shows? <laughs> Um, hmm, what would it be? It would probably be, um, um, ah. probably the, um, the, uh, the, uh, nothing, it's wonderful. <laughs> Joy, Dave. Okay, we're going to be back. Uh, with check that mailbox when I get home. <laughs> we'll be back with the Foo Fighters and the Much Music Intimate and Interactive after this. This Much Music presentation is brought to you by Durex Chic Condoms. Wish you were as soft and smooth as your friends. You need a whole new way to shave. New Skin to Mitt Smooth Shave. A unique exfoliating formula that actually lifts away dry skin while you shave. You've never felt smooth like this. New Skin to Mitt Smooth Shave. One more way to love your legs. I love this CD. Check out track two. I love these new colors. Peacock blue, fabulous. Tom, oh, I love Tom. And I definitely love my short hair. And my Motorola pager, I love it because it keeps me connected. See, there's Lori and Mom and, ooh, Tommy. I love it. Motorola pagers for one good reason, to know now. No, I don't love everything, like sharing the car with my brother, parallel parking, traffic, ew. Motorola, what you never thought possible. Customer you are calling is unavailable at the moment. Please try again later. The customer you are calling is unavailable at the moment. Please try again later. The customer you are calling is unavailable at the moment. Please try again later. Volvic natural spring water filtered through volcanic rock. Volvic, be there. Receiving from Much Music, Portis Head, Goldie, The Chemical Brothers, U2, Orbital, DJ Shadow, and many more. Just that. Are you receiving Much Music's Electronica Collection? 14 fully filtered speaker shredding tracks on sale now. Like any well-run organization, here at Much Music, the cream rises to the top, revealing the best of the very best. And starting this Saturday, we once again proudly present the number one hit weekend. Featuring even more number one hits from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I like the way you work, The number one hit weekend, this weekend on Much. Boring privileges provided by Heinz Ketchup. Watching Much Music, intimate and interactive with Foo Fighters. We're nearing the end of the show, but the boys are going to take it home with a lot of rock and roll. Take it away, Foo Fighters.
That song was called February Stars. That's on our new record. And uh, this one's on our new record too. It's called the last song on the new record. That guy likes it. You like it because that guy likes it. This is called New Way Home. This one and another early morning too. 
This is the quiet part. Shut up. Shh. Shut up. Sound out of tune to you. Are you in tune? Okay. I'm gonna be the roving singer for this song. So, just do one guitar, okay? My guitar is so out of tune. How far does this thing stretch? Hold on. 
This doesn't stretch fun. Hey, does anyone have one of those cordless much music microphones that I could use? Does anyone have one of those things? Where's our host with the most? Can I get one of the cordless things? Will this work? Hold on. Check, 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 check. Does that one work? Okay, let me try this one. Okay, I'll spit in it. Check, 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 check. Hey, hey. Check, 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 check. No, it doesn't work. Check, 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 check. Can we get it? Can we get it through the monitors? Check, 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 check. Up a little more. Turn it up, 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 up. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Check, check. Hey, 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 hey. Check, check, check. Is that working? Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Screw it. I'm going to go. Can you hear this? Do I have a go? You can't hear that. Okay, I'll hold both of them. Well, that, that, that ruins the point, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, that one works. Here, give me that. Go. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Go. This song's called Big Me. Talk about it, I could stand to prove If we can get around it, I know that it's true Well, I talked about it, put it on, never was it true But it's you, I fell into When I talk about it Carries on, reasons only new. When I talk about it, Aries are, treasons are new. Beg me to talk about it, I could stand to prove. If we can get around it, I know that it's true. Well, I talked about it. Put it on, never was it true, but it's you I fell into. Well, I talked about it, put it on, never was it true, but it's you I fell into. I fell into. I fell in to... Cut to commercial. We'll be back. My God, what a serenader he is. Okay, test, test, can you hear me? Wow, that was Austin the Foo Fighters. Thanks a lot, everybody, for coming down and thank you. Hey. Hey, do you guys, you're going to be doing one more song? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Right on. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think. The boys are very busy signing stuff. Okay. Hey, Dave, I have like sort of a Canadian question to ask you. Okay, so the, the album, The Color and the Shape, you decided to use the. Uh, English Canadian version of the word color. Why is that? Well, um, because the producer's name is Gil Norton, <laughs> and um, and uh, so it's just kind of like a nod to Gil. Yeah. Okay, you're beautiful. I love that. Running around there. Okay. Hey, how did you like it, Joe? It's 
the bomb. It was the bomb. He had you. He had you over his shoulder. <laughs> right on. And how's, how's everybody over here? How'd you dig the show? Amazing. Oh. Dave Grohl is cool. D Dave Grohl. The statement of the evening, Dave Grohl is cool. I like Hey, thank you, Taylor. Well done. Yeah, wow. Are you tired after that? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's like weird, because it's not like a show. So we have a lot of peaks and valleys in the show. And I'm still getting in shape for it, so. And Nate, how, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. This is fun. This is all right? Yeah, a bit of insanity never really hurt anybody. It's kind of good to have a glimpse of that craziness. Right on, thanks very much. Well, every once in a while, sure. <laughs> hey, how's everybody over here? And you had to dance with your glasses off, right? You had to take... Yeah, they fall off. Now you can see the band. Yeah. For them to sign some stuff. Yeah.